Take your Bibles this morning and turn with me to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. We've been looking over the last several weeks. Um, I, I guess it's a series of messages, but the theme has been um, a relationship, not religion. God is not looking for religion from us. He's looking for a relationship with us. God <clears throat> desires us. He desires our presence in his life, to be a part of his life, to be included and, and to make God to be the central point and the focal point of our life. And so that's what we've been focused on over the last several weeks. And just kind of giving some uh, relationship advice along the way. You know, I guess that really wasn't my intent, but that's, that's kind of how this, this has gone. Uh, today's message has gone through several title changes. I started out calling it No Boundaries. But I didn't like the idea that gave because in a relationship you do need to have boundaries. And so I didn't like that, the, 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 the connotation of that. So didn't like that. So then I switched it to limitless. That was kind of what I wanted, but I didn't like that either. So I just kept praying about it, praying about it. And then it switched to I surrender all. Yeah, that's it. We'll call it I surrender all. Nah, I didn't like that either. So those are all kind of the idea of this message. And then I finally settled on the message that you see up on the screen, the title you see on the screen, Give Fully to Each Other. I'll tell you where that comes from. That comes from my wedding ceremony, actually. Whenever I perform a wedding ceremony, uh, there's a portion in there where the preacher challenges the young couple in, in this new walk with, in, in, together. And one of the phrases in there that I use is that each of these is to give fully to each other. And that is a good idea. It truly is. You know, whenever you're in any kind of relationship, we need to learn to give fully to the other person, to be 100% in that relationship. You know, you see so many times when one person is more committed to the relationship than the other, and it just doesn't seem to work. And that is, holds true in our relationship with God as well. We need to learn to give fully to this relationship that we have with God. Okay, A lot of times people are what the Bible says in the book of Revelation. They're lukewarm. You know, we're only so-so in our walk with the Lord. You know, it's like if, if we, we, we love the Lord, we walk with the Lord, we serve the Lord, if it, it benefits us or if it's easy. Uh, but when life is difficult, a lot of times many people walk away from the Lord. And so the idea of giving fully today to God is what we want to talk about, is giving ourselves 100% to this walk in this relationship with God, realizing that He really is the most important thing in our life. More important than anything else that we have going on in our life, God is the most important thing. And, and in the, my life verse, the verse that I live, live by, Matthew 6, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And that's how I've endeavored to live my life, is to put God first in my life, and God takes care of the rest. He really does. We make sure that I have a good relationship with my wife and my kids and my job and everything that I do, you know. And so th that's the idea behind this is to give ourselves 100% to this walk and this relationship with God, okay. And as I've done with many of the messages, I kind of look at things from God's perspective first, looking at how God looks at us and how he treats us. And I'm here today to tell you, and I think we all understand, is that God gives fully to each and every one of us each and every moment of our lives. He truly does. As I've shared with you many times before, there was a time in my life I didn't believe that. I didn't believe that God cared about me. I didn't believe that God was working in my life. I believed in God. You know, I wasn't saved at the time, but I did believe in God. I had a belief of Him, and I actually did read a Bible and would go to church, but I wasn't saved yet, and I didn't think God cared one bit about my life because of all the problems that were going on in my life at the time. But after I got saved and started living for the Lord, I started to realize and was able to look back and see how that God was there in my life every step of the way. And I just didn't see it, didn't realize all that God was doing. It's kind of like the age old adage, you don't know what you miss until it's gone, right? And when something's gone, then you're like, wow. You know, sometimes, you know, we wish things away and then once they're gone, we're like, well, I wish they were still here. And it leaves a hole and a gap in our life. And so, my friends, God is always there. So that's the first part that I want to look at is that, that this God that we serve, this God that's wanting a relationship with us is fully committed to you. He is 100% in this and he is constantly giving you all that you need. And so let's look at God's side of this first. John 3 verse 33 comes right out and says that God is true. Plain and simple, we serve a true God. There's a, man, there's a lot of deities in this world, man-made deities in this world. People want to serve this, that, or the other. And, but there is only one true God, and that one true God is Jehovah God, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, uh, the God of the Israelites, the Creator God. Call Him what you want, but there's only one true God, and that's God Almighty, the God that you and I serve today. He is the true God. Everything else 
is a liar, the Bible says. God is the only true God. And so God's always going to be, and sometimes this is hard, but God's always going to be truthful with you and I. Amen? He always is. He's going to tell you the truth, sometimes even when it hurts. You know, many times, perhaps, you know, you're sitting in church and you hear a message preached and it smacks you upside the head. <clears throat> or, you're re <clears throat> or you're reading your Bible, doing your devotions, and it really just grabs a hold of your heart. And you're like, mm -hmm. and you know, God just kind of squeezes. God is true. He's not going to hold back from the truth. And it's because he loves you. It's because he cares so much for us. The Bible says in Revelation 19, it says that he is called faithful and true. God will always be 100% faithful to you, whether you believe that or not. God is always faithful to you. Always in all that you're doing, in all that you're living your life and everywhere you go, everything you're going through. God has always been faithful to you. You know, whether we're faithful and true with him, that's another story. You know, it's always it's amazing to me. People think that they can lie to God. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> it's like he knows. You know, you think mom knows? God truly knows. But he is faithful and true. Jeremiah teaches us that God loves us with an everlasting love. How long is everlasting? Think about that one for a second, okay? It's kind of a redundant question, but that's the kind of love that God has for you today. And that's even when we're not living right. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, the Bible says we were all sinners. Romans 5, 8 says that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And so his love is everlasting. It's amazing to me that people think that when we fail, when we sin, when we make a mistake, when we backslide, whatever you want to call it, we feel like God loves us less. No. To be honest with you, when we get away from the Lord, I think he loves us more. Amen. Just like when the 99 sheep are still in the sheepfold and the one goes astray, the shepherd goes after that one. Because he loves them. He loves them more. And so, my friends, today, God's love is everlasting. He is always going to be fully committed to you. He is going to give you all that he has. He's not going to let you get away. He's not going to let you run away. If you try, he's going to throttle you. You know, he truly is. He's not going to let you get away with anything in your life. And that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Romans 8, 39 tells us that there is nothing, nothing. Understand this today. Nothing that can separate us from the love of God, from God's full and 100% commit, commitment to you. From the very beginning of time when God created this earth, when God said, let there be light, and he knew that how this creation would unfold, he knew that Adam and Eve would walk away. God is looking for a people that are willing to come back to him. Okay, God is, he don't want people that, that have to serve him, that are forced to serve him. God wants a people that want to serve him, that want to love him. He is doing his part. He is fully committed to you. He is giving you all that he has in, in faithfulness and in honesty and in truth, giving you all this love. And he proved that in probably the most recognized verse in the world today, John 3, 16, which says that God so loved that he, he gave. And that's what we're talking about today, giving fully. My friends, God gave fully. He gave his only begotten son. His one and only son, his true heir, he gave him to die on the cruel cross of Calvary for you and for me. Jesus Christ gave his life. I think we know that. We understand that today. And so from God's perspective, from God's point of view, he gives fully to you each and every day of our lives, whether we realize it, okay? Even when life doesn't go the way you think it should. And that happens from time to time, amen? Life likes to throw us curveballs. You know, for the most part, you know, life's pretty much, you know, simple. You know, we know what we're going to do from day to day. We know how things, but every once in a while, things happen. And when you have an accident or you have a health scare or, or you get laid off from your work or whatever, you know, those things happen. Doesn't mean that God's forsaking you. Doesn't mean that he's left you. He's still there, still loving you, still guiding you, still directing you, still helping you in all things that you're supposed to do. You know, you think of uh, Joseph, uh, the youngest brother there, then how he was, uh, that his brothers wanted to kill him. You know, I was the baby brother. I understand that. My older brothers always wanted to kill me. Okay, that's just how it is. You know, and the oldest brother, Reuben, says, no, we can't kill him. Let's, let's sell him into slavery. Yeah, that'll be better. And so that's what they did. And so poor Joseph goes from being in a pit sold to a slave and becomes a slave in Egypt. Not good, right? But in the end, we know the outcome of that story. Joseph ended up saving the entire nation of Israel because of that event. So we don't know the end of the story. We don't know how things are going to work out. Um, there's a song on the radio now. I think it's on the radio uh, by Torrin Wells. But the, the, the gist of the song says, if it ain't good, then God ain't done yet. 
Okay? And God's going to keep working in your life until it is good. The Bible says God works all things together for the what? For the good. To those that love him. To those that are called according to his purpose. So my friends today, understand God is true. Everything else is a lie. Everything else is lying to you. Satan is lying to you. The world is lying to you. And they're constantly doing everything that they can to pull you away from God, away from the Lord, away from this walk, away from this relationship with God. This is the place we need to be, is in this walk and in this journey with the Lord. God will never quit on you. He'll never fail you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never give up on you. Never. He just won't do that. You are his. You are bought with a price, okay? And you are sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And so understand, when we talk about giving fully to each other that's not an easy thing amen it's truly not in any relationship no matter what it is you know whether it's at work you know it's like how many how many people give their all every day at work you know it's not an easy thing to do some days you just ain't feeling it amen and so and same thing with our relationships here on this earth with our friends and with our spouse with our kids whatever it's hard but i want you to know today is that god 100% of the time gives you 100% of him. He is always there working in your life, whether you know it, whether you realize it or not. And it's at those times in our life that we do know, that we do realize it, those are special moments that we know that God is there. And so my friends today, if, if God's fulfilling his end of this bargain, which he does, okay, if God, so then the, the, the variable in this whole equation is what? It's us, as always, okay? And so are we giving fully to the Lord? And so if our life is out of sorts, if things aren't the way that they should be, and I realize that sometimes things happen that are beyond our control, but that doesn't give us an excuse to not give fully to the Lord. But if our life is out of sorts, we've got to take a good, long, hard look at ourselves and ask ourselves, am I giving fully to the Lord? Am I seeking God first? Am I putting Him at the forefront of my life? Including Him in all that I say, in all that I do, in all of my walk, in all of my decisions. Am I giving fully to the Lord? Am I giving 100% to this relationship with God? And so that's where we, we want to start. There's a verse, and we're getting our text here in just a second. There's a verse in Proverbs, which says in Proverbs 23, verse 26, My son, he says, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. And so our part of the equation is, is to learn to give God our heart. It's a hard thing to do. Love is a very fickle thing, especially in this world today. Uh, people are, have a hard time with that. Being faithful in their love, giving fully in their love. It's a hard thing. It truly is. But I guarantee you, the closer you get to the Lord, the easier it is to love. I want you to understand that today. I've often said, I don't know this to be 100% true, but I truly believe from the depths of my heart that apart from being saved and being a child of God, I don't think a person can truly love the way that we're supposed to, unconditionally with that, that holy agape kind of love. I think that coming as close to God as we can, that's how we learn to love. That's how we learn to love our spouse. That's how we learn to love our children. That's how we learn to love uh, the, the unlovable people of this world is when we love like God loved. And the only way to do that is to walk in this relationship with God. And so God tells in Proverbs there in, that he writes there, he says, we are to give God our heart. That's what God wants. And again, that's a hard thing to do. You know, for some people, it's harder than others. People that have gone through a lot in their life, people that have had a lot of tragedy, people that have uh, taken advantage of them, used them, abused them, that sort of a thing. It's hard for them to give their heart fully, 100%. But that's exactly what God is asking from us today. <clears throat> if we are going to give fully in this relationship, which God has already done on his part, if we are going to give fully to this relationship, this is what we need to learn, learn to do, is to give God our heart. Look with me here in your Bibles in our text, James chapter 4. Jump down to verse 4. We'll read down to verse 10, I believe. <clears> or <throat> maybe 11. No, 10. But in verse 4, he says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not, and watch this, he says that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And that's exactly what we're talking about today, is, is whether you choose to give yourself fully to God or if you're enticed by the world. Verse 5, he says, Do you think the scripture uh, saith, which saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? God is a very jealous God. He's jealous of us. He wants that heart. Verse 6, he says, He giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Three things. He says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 
Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn. Weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. In verse 10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Three things that I, there's actually a lot of things that I've preached on this message before. But these three things that are up on the wall that I want you to see today, this idea of giving ourselves fully to the Lord. We must submit our lives to him. It's not an easy thing to do, to submit I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, again, I had two older brothers, and, and we used to call it, I, we called it mercy, I don't know what everybody else calls it, but basically you would lock hands like this with your brother, and the idea was basically to try and break your, your brother's wrist, I don't know how to explain it, but you would just push back as far as, has anybody else ever played this with their brother? Okay, I'm sorry, you don't know what I'm talking about, but you just push, you push as hard as you can, just try, and try, of course, being younger, I was lost, and I was the one that always had to submit, always, I never did win that game and stuff, and I'm sure they thought that was the coolest thing in the world, but that's not an easy thing to do, to submit ourselves to someone else, but that's exactly what God, he is a very jealous God, he wants us to submit to him. Think about again all that God has done for you. Think about all that God has given for you to bring us to this place that we are in, in our lives right now. And all God asks is that we submit ourselves to him freely, willingly, not because we're forced to, but because we want to, because that's what's the desire upon our heart is to submit ourselves to him. And if we do that, then God takes care of everything. He talks about resisting the devil and the devil will flee from us. We don't have to fight our own battles. We don't have to overcome the evil in this world. Just submit yourself to God and he'll take care of it for you. That's the kind of God that he is. And so we are to submit ourselves to him. Not an easy thing to do by any stretch of the imagination. Real easy to say it, real easy to preach it, real easy to read it, but to live it is another thing because we don't like to submit. That's all there is to it. It's like when four cars come to a four-way stop. Who's going to go first, you know? Who submits? Who surrenders? Nobody likes that. I've sat there sometimes and watched cars fighting. It's like, really, people? Can someone just go so we can move on? But we do this all the time. We fight for control all the time. And it's so sad that we see that. But God is asking us to submit ourselves. And it's not a, it, well, it is our thing. I'm not going to lie. But it is a worthwhile thing that when we submit, things start to make sense. Things start to fall into place. And then not only to submit to him, verse 8 says that we are to draw near to him. And that's what this relationship with God is all about, is to be as near to God as we possibly can. Come meet him in that holy place, in the holy of holies. God says, enter in, come to that place, be with me, spend time with me, share your life with me, submit, draw near to me. That's what giving fully to the Lord is all about. I want, and I don't say this to be mean, but maybe a little, but I wonder how many of us that are here today, you're here in, in body, you know, for whatever reason, but right now, even as I'm preaching, your mind is elsewhere. Your heart is elsewhere. Thinking about this, that, or the other. That's what we're talking about today. Be fully in this moment with God. Every moment of your day, when you get up in the morning, spending time with him in prayer and in reading your Bible, being fully surrendered, fully, and it is well worth it because the Bible says when we draw near to him, he draws near to us. How blessed that is, how precious that is. To have God at your side, helping you, just loving you, bringing his peace into your life. The peace that passes all understanding. And then verse 10, it tells us to humble ourselves before God. Admitting that sometimes I am wrong. Sometimes I am the one, the one that is in, in the wrong in this situation. We always want to blame someone else. We want to blame God. We want to blame another person. We want to blame the circumstances of life. We want to blame the president. That seems what people like to do, right? So blame, blame the government. It's all the government's fault. We want to blame somebody for something. Humble yourself. Realize, you know what? I, I, I'm the one that got me in this predicament. Plain and simple. I'm the one that put myself in this place. And so first and foremost, God, understand, he is jealous for you. He truly is. He desires you in his life. You know, when we get older and, and our kids move on, it, it's kind of sad. We get to missing them. You know, when they were in the house, we're like, oh, I can't wait till these kids get out of the house. And then they're gone. And you're like, I miss these kids. I truly do. You know, and, and it, 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 it's just kind of sad that, again, that, you know, they move on to their own life. But we as people, we do the same thing. We move on in our life and we don't spend the time with God that we should. We're so busy and involved in our own life and our own doings that we're not spending the time with God. That we, we're not giving fully to this relationship with God. 
And that's why we miss out on so much. That's why we don't have the blessings. That's why our life doesn't fit so many times. Is because we're not fully committed to this relationship with God. God is jealous for you today. He wants to be a part of your life. Uh, number two, we need to lose ourselves to him. We need to lose ourselves to God. Matthew 16, the Bible says, whosoever uh, shall save his life. Let me read the full thing here. Uh, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever loses life for my sake shall find it. And so my friends today, you want to find the perfect life. You got to lose it. Surrender, submit, dr draw near, do whatever you got to do. But when you give up your life, when you surrender, when you lose your life, that's when you find it. You know, I was living for myself before. Even when I was a Christian, I was still living for myself. And I actually had a very stark reminder of that just this week at the, the grocery store in, in, in town where I work. Um, they're putting in a new Wi-Fi internet thing. Basically, they're trying to separate the, the credit card internet from the rest of the internet so somebody can't sneak in and steal your credit card numbers. Blah, blah, blah. Doing all It's a security thing. That's what they're doing. So they were working on it. And the guys that were doing this were guys my age. Okay? And as I was watching them do that, I was reminded of the fact that, you know what, that had been me. That was the course of my life. That was the track that I was on. When I graduated high school, I went to college uh, back in the early 80s when computers were just starting to be a thing and was learning computer programming and, and networking and internet and all that stuff. And I thought that had been me. That had been the job that I had was that sort of a job. And, and, and I was reminded, the devil reminded me, it's like, Brian, You'd have been a rich man right now, you know, if you'd have kept up with that course, if you'd have stayed involved with uh, with the internet the way that you you know intended. You'd be, but then as, as the devil was reminding me of this, you know, watching these guys do this, and I'm like, and and, and I was watching them, I thought, that's not how you're supposed to do that, you know. But anyway, you know, watching these guys do this, but then what God did is He started reminding me of all the years of preaching and all the lives that we've touched, souls that have been saved. The difference that we've made in this community you know it's not a lot but still it's something and God reminded me it's like Brian I put you on a different course that's not the course that I wanted you on that's not the direction that I wanted you on I had to lose my life in order to find it okay and I'm thankful that I did you know I'm thankful for my wife and for my kids and for the ministry that God has given to me Believe me, I don't take it lightly. You know, Paul, he says, you know, I'm thankful for the ministry that you've given to me. And so many times I feel so unworthy of that ministry. And I try to do the very best that I can. I want, when I get to heaven, I want God to clap me on the back and give me an attaboy. That's what I'm, that's my dream in life. You know, does it get that attaboy from the Lord knowing that, but lose your life today. Right now, as we sit here, we have an idea in our mind of what we want to do, where we want to be. Okay. And to some degree, that's Okay. Okay, but make sure that it lines up with where God wants you to be. Don't be like Jonah and decide you want to go this way and God wants you to go that way. Okay, don't make God have to uh, create a whole new animal to chew you up and spit you out where you need to be. Amen. Lose your life for the Lord. It really is best. Okay, because when you lose your life, you find it. You find your happily ever after. You know, like all the princesses always want their happily ever after and stuff. The only way to find happily ever after is to lose your life. That's the only way that you find it again. Give fully to this relationship. Number three, understand is that you will be blessed. I want us to understand. This is a hard thing to do. To give fully to this walk and this relationship with God. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to make it sound better than it is. It is a hard thing to do. Think about it. Think about your own relationship with people. Your husband, your wife, your kids. It's hard to give fully to any relationship because by nature, we are selfish. Amen? Are we not? That's just how we are. It's just human nature. Okay? And so, my friends, today, it's not an easy thing. And then to give fully to a relationship with God Almighty, who we, 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 we can't see. He's not like we can go and sit down and have a meal with him in person. And so it's hard to give fully to this relationship with God when there are so many distractions out there in this world. And not necessarily bad things, just distractions, things that pull us away from our walk and our relationship with God. But understand today is that when we learn to give fully to this relationship with God, 
when we are fully committed, when we surrender all, when we say there's no boundaries, I'm just going to throw myself into this, we will be blessed. What does he say there? Matthew 19, 29. He says, everyone that has forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall what? Shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. The Bible says that you, whatever you give, God will give it back to you. How much? A hundredfold back in return. I know this to be true in my own life. Today, I truly feel blessed of God. I truly feel blessed of God of all that he has done in my life. And, 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 and that's even going through life. So many times I feel like I've, I've failed. I feel like I've fallen short. Sometimes think, people think, oh, this is a preacher. He's got it all together. I got a newsflash for you. I don't. I'm a human being just like anyone else. I have my struggles and demons that I battle all the time just like anyone else, just like all of us. But I today feel so blessed of God looking at my life and seeing all that God has done, all that he has allowed me to do. And then the future that's before us, it's a bright future of opportunity to serve God and to make a difference in the hearts and lives of people. My friends, today we truly will be blessed. He says, listen, you will receive a hundredfold. Believe it today. Just like Job, after the devil had put Job through all of those trials and stuff, God blessed him again. And you know what? Sometimes we may not see those blessings this side of heaven. And I don't know about you, but I'm okay with that. Because the blessings I get now, they end when I die. Okay, plain and simple. It's not like the pharaohs that put all those treasures in their, their tombs and in their pyramids, thinking they could take it with them to the afterlife. That's not how it works. All the Tomb Raiders got all those treasures. Amen. They don't take it with you. My friends, I want the Bible says build up for yourselves treasures in heaven. That's where I want my rewards. That's where I want my hundredfold. And so as I surrender myself to the Lord and as I give fully to the Lord and walk with him and live for him, you know, it's like, Lord, you can keep the payment. You can keep the blessings. I don't want them now. Let's store them in heaven. I want them when I can have them forever. Is that selfish on me? I don't know, but that's when I want them. I want my blessings in glory because I'm going to be in glory for a very, very long time, my friends. It's hard for us to fathom forever, but we truly will bless, be blessed. I want us to understand that today. This is a very hard thing to give fully to the Lord, to surrender yourselves to him is a hard thing, but you will be blessed. Okay. And then one last point that I think I need to make. Okay. And it's important for us to understand this is that we do belong to God. If you're here today and you're saved, born again, child of God, you are God's property. You are his possession. The Bible says we are bought with a price. What is that price? The precious blood of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not your own. How many times those little kids looked at their parents and said, you're not the boss of me. And now what kids like to say, I've heard kids say it. You know, and nowadays we're raising a generation of kids that have no respect of authority whatsoever, whether it be the police, a teacher, a preacher, doesn't matter. OK, it's just sad that that's the kind of generation that we see today. But we as a people need to understand today is that I belong to the Lord. Romans 14 verses 7 and 8 says, for none of us liveth unto himself and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, what does it say? We are the Lord's. My friends, whether you live or die, you belong to God today. And so give yourselves 100% to this relationship. Give fully to the Lord every moment of your life. It's hard. It's not an easy thing to do. God may lead you in a direction you, he will. I'm gonna guarantee, I'm gonna promise you right. God will lead you in a direction you don't wanna go. I'm just gonna tell you straight up. That's just how it is. God is gonna lead you in a place you don't wanna go. He's gonna have you be somewhere. He's gonna get you outside your comfort zone. That's just what God does, okay? Because there's a work that needs to be done outside these four walls. There's people that need the Lord Jesus Christ. They need what you have. They need the message of God's love. They need to know that Jesus died for them, that God loves them. And we are the ones that bring that message. And so as we give fully to the Lord, as we give fully to this relationship, God uses us to minister to the needs of people around us, whether it be the people in our own household, the people in our, where we work or wherever. But people need us everywhere that we go. I, I, I promise you, friends, when you give fully to the Lord, God will send people your way every day. I, there are times I get frustrated that I have to work at the grocery store, but then every day that I'm there, I, I minister to somebody. 
whether it's a coworker or just a person that I run into or whatever, I, I can't tell you how many times I've talked with people, counseled with people, prayed with people. God will use us when you give fully. Now, you can live your life in a bubble. You know, you know, not surrender, not give fully to this thing. Come to church once in a while, pray once in a while. But you're the one that's losing out. You're the one that's missing out on the blessings of God. It's up to you. You choose, okay? But when you give fully to any relationship, you truly will be blessed. You truly will. But understand, the period of this whole message is, though, is that you do belong to God. In the end, He is the boss of you, okay? He truly is.